is up, everybody? You're listening to another episode of the Stay Tranquilo podcast, powered by Johnny Cuba. Uh, we're here with my boy Will Langell. Uh, do I? Am I saying no, Langell? Langell. Everyone, Langell. everyone, everyone gets I always, it wrong. always, I always feel like I say your, your it's, last it's name. It's difficult. Wrong. It's uh, I mean, it's it's Hungarian, and a lot of it's pronounced like Yell. So even oh, I wow. don't even pronounce it the right way. Okay. But I, I always, I grew up pronouncing it Langell. So yeah. I could see as matter growing up, a bunch of like. You know, certi- even diploma was incorrect. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's my your last name is definitely harder to spell than mine. I mean, mine like on paper, if you look at it, it doesn't look that hard. But like pronunciation is Dunan, but yeah. no one ever pronounces it that way. It's always done in people, <laughs> people. People somehow will change the last N to an R, so they'll say Dunard. I'm like, there's not even an R in my name. Like, <laughs> I think the problem is it's the Y. And my last name is L-E-N-G-Y-L. Yeah. So if you just say Len... I don't know. I guess Len... People... Len- the, they, they see the Y and the Y throws them off. That's yeah. the problem. So whatever. Freaking it is what it is. I've accepted that no one's ever going to get it right. Yeah. So. No, I'm the same boy. I'm like, <laughs> you, you pronounce it however you want. There you go. Um, but yeah, tell us a little bit about you, what you got going on, what you do. So um, I'm a realtor. And obviously, I think a lot of people know that. And I've just, you know, my whole life kind of been involved in real estate, real estate marketing. I've worked with developers, boutique firms from Chicago, Miami. Um, my company is based in, Compass is based in New York. And we've quickly expanded over the last seven years now from startup to $7 billion valuation. So it's cool to work for not only Compass, but Compass as a tech company, we're yeah. changing the way real estate's done. So I'm very Definitely. excited to help people who are in our generation navigate such a ridiculous and tough market, especially Miami Nowadays, that just today yeah. became the least affordable market in the United States. Wow. Just that's, a few hours ago. That's that uh, great news for all our, <laughs> our all these home buyers yeah. out here right now. Well, it's, it's tough, dude, because they're dealing with a lot of people who have so much cash from New York. People are fed up with the politics of some of their states. No, it makes sense. I mean, I think it was long overdue. I think eventually Miami was supposed to be that place strictly because of a lot of what the, you know, the laws that were in some of these other large um, cities like New York, like San Francisco, you know, California in general. Um, I think it was inevitable. Plus, you had the the layer of like how awesome Miami is as a city. The tax haven. Yeah, taxes. (laughs) But you have the the beaches, the weather. Like there's so many other additional reasons to it. Because it's like, I mean, no offense to like. I don't know, like Wisconsin, but like I don't want to live in Wisconsin. You it's know, it's funny you mentioned that because the most affordable city on the list <laughs> was Wichita, Wisconsin. Wow, so, see, there you go. <laughs> not that anybody would move there. I don't no, think nothing, I mean, nothing listen, against. Uh, I'm sorry, Wichita, Kansas, Wisconsin oh, wasn't Kansas. on okay. there. My bad. I don't know. I don't know geography that well to be like, dude, that's not in Wisconsin. <laughs> I could have I could have run with it, and you would have been like, oh, yeah, I, I, I would have never known. I would have gone in like a comment, and be like, dude, Wichita's in Kansas. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's crazy to see how Miami has grown, I mean, right before our eyes, since we were born, yeah. nothing existed in downtown Dude. Brickell, and now it's, it's. I love it, I used to actually, believe it or not, hate Miami, I always used to want Me to live in, in New York or Los Angeles, the more I got to travel, I will touch on traveling too, yeah. briefly later, because I'm sure you have a lot of good stories that I would personally like to hear, and we both like travel a lot. <laughs> Um, I started to love Miami more, dude. I was like, there's no place it's like true. home, there's no place like Miami, and I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world now. My two favorite days of traveling, the day I leave and the day I come back. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I, that's, 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 a, that's a good way to put it. It's true. It's like the, the anticipation of like going you know somewhere new, whether yeah. it's a place you've been to, but just new like new destination. Yeah. But, dude, I feel the same way. Like, I'm always happy to come back here. Like, yeah. it, it, it's, it's something that I don't know what it is. You know, obviously, we're born and raised here, so um, it's home. It's electric, but dude. But yeah, it, it, it hits different, you know, like some of the biggest cities, like you go there and it's just not, it's not the same. To be honest, I went to New York uh, in December and I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. Really? Yeah. It like didn't, cause to me, New York was a place that I genuinely really always loved. I've gone there already a, a couple times. But something about it, I don't know if it was fucking was 18 degrees. and been the weather. It, but that didn't help. But like, I don't know, it, it looked a little bit more trashier than us- usual, uh-huh. right? Um, it just didn't, I don't know, it didn't feel the same. I don't know if it's like I'm just growing more of an appreciation to the warmth and the, the weather and the culture of what Miami's becoming, but it just, I don't know, it didn't hit the same. I mean, it's a tough, that's a tough temperature to be. It is, it I is. Li- I personally like the cold weather. 
Like I, I do too. I like the break of the heat, you know, and, and going to cold places. I was just in New York on Monday. I had to get a sandwich from, Pastr- from Cat's Deli. No, the food there is fucking phenomenal. Sandwich from Cat's Deli. I, had, I literally just went for the day and came back with one of my... One of my I did see that. That's yeah, epic. Friends. So we got a lot done. I was little. I was like, we went to, I think, four or five different bars and got food. So I was very like, we that's, got a lot done in a day. That's impressive. You know? And uh, traveling like that, a lot of people think it's, like, super expensive, but it's not. You just got to be willing to be flexible. Yeah, and know? on the days that it's a little yeah, bit more affordable. Yeah, you go, well, that's how I've always traveled. Okay, when's it cheap? We're going then. Yeah. Not when can I When go? is it convenient when for me? When is it convenient for yeah. the airfare to, to exactly. for me to pay for the that's airfare? That's true. So. A, a hidden feature that I found, I don't know if, if you've ever done this. So Google has an option called Explore, right? And you put the time frame of like a month or a few months that you would want to go yeah. somewhere. It doesn't even matter where you want to go. The duration of the trip. So if it's a weekend trip, a week-long trip, whatever it may be. And it'll just spit out a bunch of bunch costs of cities. of cities that you can fly to. So if you want to go fly to Arizona and it's $45, you can book a flight yeah. on there. So it just it, it explores for you flights in different cities. You can tell them the territory you want to go to. So if it's international, you can put international. Yeah. Um, if it's in the U.S., domestic, you could put that, and it'll just spit out a I bunch gotta, of the- I got to get in on that, because I usually just, I'm like, well, what city do I feel like going to? Right, and, and then you'll search. Google Flights, and I'll search it, because Google Flights does a great job of at least telling you- They do. You know, which yeah. days are the cheapest to fly, and also secretflying.com. I've never, never used that. I've used Hopper. Secretflying.com is where it's at, because okay. they show you air fares, they show you what fares are just low in general all around the world. My flight to Malaysia- I flew for five hundred and ten dollars wow. round trip. Damn. Because it was an airfare and it showed up and we bought that and we rode out there. So I'm Damn. gonna send that to you when we're yes. done. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I've it's, never heard of that one. I've heard of all these like uh, what's the other one? Skybound or Sky something. I've used that one. Hopper is the one I usually use because yeah. it'll tell you like what dates yeah, to yeah. buy. You know, like hey, like this flight is three hundred dollars, but it's expected to drop to like one fifty. Yeah. So I, I've used that in the past, but. Uh, um, so what's been your favorite city recently? Favorite, been favorite city recently? Hmm, that's a good question. I went to Nashville recently. That was a good time. How was you liked it? I did. I did. Okay. I won't go there again for a long uh, for a <laughs> while. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think I'm going there for a while either. Yeah, and it's it was, already been a uh, two years since I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went. We did like a a week long trip of uh, following the Dolphins. So okay. at the end of the year, so we went to New Orleans on the 26th. They played Monday night in New Orleans. So we watched them in New Orleans. Uh-huh. That stadium is sick. Did the, they win the that Super game? Do- they won that, they game. won that game. So that was That's eight right. in a row. So we were like, shit, dude. Like, if we keep winning, like, we win in this road trip, we come back home, and we win the last game, we're going into the playoffs. So we were like, damn. Because when we booked that trip, we booked it. It was probably, like, week three. We were, like, one and four. We're like, bro. Or, yeah, like, one and two. Well, at least you guys won a game in a row. The Broncos but didn't that, even win two in a row. So. Yeah, so, so we were going into that trip, like, dude, we're watching another terrible Dolphins team. Then we go on this crazy seven-game winning streak yeah. going into the trip. So it was win in, in uh, New Orleans. That was uh, week, uh, the, uh, the game eight in a row. Then went into Tennessee, and that game was miserable. Yeah. Because we got our asses handed to us. And is then Derek Henry playing in that one? Henry was, was not playing. Um, was like, the refs, there was a lot of bad calls. I mean, the offense couldn't do crap, but it was like, it was like a sleet game. And we were sitting on the top of the stadium just getting pelted by ice yeah. the whole time. There wasn't enough whiskey to, like, keep me warm in that game, dude. Like, and we got thermals at Walmart. Because when we booked the trip yeah. the week before, it said it was going to be, like, 60 degrees at game time, warm, sunny. Uh-huh. Then all of a sudden, three days before the trip, weather changed drastically. It's like, it's going to snow. Yeah. And we're like, dude, I don't, I don't got any snow clothes for this game right now. Like... So we had to go to Walmart, get thermals, got, thermal underwear, got gloves, yeah, yeah, just for the game, and then to watch us get our asses handed to I us. I forgot my gloves when I somebody to Kilimanjaro. So that yes, was, I, th- I actually, I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's I had insane. just bought hiking gloves. I didn't bring like ski gloves, so that was a whole mission in and of itself trying yeah. to reach the the top on the last day. So I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to to talk about that. Yeah. So you recently climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with I summited. Mount yeah, Kilimanjaro. so summited. summited. So <laughs> tell us about that experience, like from soup to nuts, like the preparation that goes into oh, something man. like that. And then the actual experience so, itself. This whole the whole trip was, um, you know, it, I think it started at a bar. Actually, uh, one of my buddies was like, "Hey, let's let's 
the summit Kilimanjaro and I was like I'm a yes man so I was just like all yeah. right let's do it and I think some people didn't know how serious I was or, or, or but I'm, I, if you come to me with a good travel idea I'm down I'm let's there, do yeah. it let's run it and in my head I love this idea because it's never even passed through my head before I've never thought like okay let's summit a mountain is that even feasible <laughs> And so I did my research. I was like, all right, this is cool. Apparently, like, you can do it. Not with minimal training. You need to be fit, or very fit, rather. Right. we were having a hard time towards the end. I can imagine. I was having a hard time. Because what's the summit height is? 19,500 feet. So that's <sighs> taller than any highest point in the contiguous 48 United, uh, I'm sorry, states. Yeah. Um, so pre- preparation was just, you know, uh, running every day, just being healthy, cardio. Yeah. The most important thing, though, was Stairmaster with a backpack because we were hiking every day with 15, True. 20 pounds on our backs. The porters, they would carry everything. These guys were crazy. They'd come by with their tents. Just They actually would break down the camps af- uh, after we had already left, and they would still get to the next camp after us, carrying our tents. God so huge damn. Duffel That's bags. just what they do. They just climb up and down. Well, my guide said he climbs Kilimanjaro twice a month. Twice a month, he, he summits. And it's usually between six to eight days. And it was, I mean, that blew my mind away. He's pretty much doing that every day of the month. Pretty much. So, I mean, half, you know, 50% of the month, he's, yeah. he's hiking. Yeah. And that blew my mind away. And um, as far as, th- it was, the closer that the trip got, it was equal parts excitement, equal parts um, nervousness. Because I hadn't traveled transatlantic yet in a year and a half since starting to deal with all my anxiety issues and, and all of that. So this was like a massive step, and um, I was I couldn't have been more excited once I actually. I'll never forget. I flew from Miami JFK JFK to Amsterdam and Amsterdam to Kilimanjaro. But on that JFK flight to Amsterdam, I like I felt I like cried because my parents. I was like, Hey, I'm I'm gonna be on this flight. Yeah. I'll text you guys when I land, etc. I mean, I had Wi-Fi anyway, but I was gonna be asleep. Mm-hmm. I cried for a second. I was like, I'm doing this again. You know, I'm doing what I love again. It's been a year and a half since I've been able to travel, like, transatlantic. It took me six months just to travel two hours away from Miami um, after dealing with all that. And, I mean, getting to the top of the mountain was, like, no, it's a surreal. surreal. Yeah. I couldn't put it in words. I I, it still it. hasn't hit me. Like, I don't think I did that. Like, that's one of those <laughs> things that's just never going to hit. Because it sounds so ridiculous. Yeah, but you're going to always look back at that moment and be like, damn, I did that. I, I, did, I did fucking do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking and sick. I'm so, I'm so happy that I did it with the people that I did with too. Yeah. But that the helps. crazier thing was we actually, uh, I contracted COVID the day before that I was supposed to get on the flight. Two days before actually. Are you serious? Yeah. So uh, my buddies, I told them, hey, just go without me. I'll catch up. And um, so that added another variable to the whole trip and i asked my I, I, call, I was talking to my dad i called my dad and i was like hey should i just do you think i can do this by myself you know do you think i can do it by myself if i have to because they're going to start before me or do it at the end of it because we had a whole trip plan so i was like okay maybe i'll meet up with them after the hike and after everyone goes home i'll go and do the hike alone and I love my dad because my dad was like, look, you've, you've done everything you need to do to be mentally healthy. There's no reason you can't do right. this. And I was just, that's like all the motivation I needed, yeah. you know, to just push forward and be like, I'm going to do this solo. And um, I did the hike solo, trying to catch up to my friends. The, I was supposed to catch up with them the first day, mind you. So let me backtrack a little. I got a negative PCR test, right? My buddies were like, come, just, just go with that test. I wanted to get a second one to confirm. They were like, just come, it's okay, like, you can bribe the customs here in the airport, <laughs> and I was like, if, if I'm positive again. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, screw it. So I bought a new flight after missing my original flight, like, at 6 in the morning, I bought a new flight, Damn. I'm on my way to Africa by 11 a.m. So, on my flight to Amsterdam, from JFK to Amsterdam, I got a COVID result from the one that I, that I took f- to confirm my negative, right. positive. God damn it. So I summited Kilimanjaro allegedly. Right. Assuming positive. like that uh, one, one of those was real and it was the yeah, positive so one that you were positive. Exactly. The whole time I was freaking out when I landed, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get quarantined in, in Africa. And well, there's so many different things. It's like, because I mean, COVID is allegedly like, you know, it affects the lungs too. Yeah. You're about to do this crazy. Like I was 100% asymptomatic. Yeah. 
So, but you're right. I was just like, oh my god, what if? Yeah, anything at that point, start, anything's running in your head. What if I start having problems when I'm on the mountain and then um, you're ten thousand feet up? Yeah, but I had I called my sister in law, who's a nurse practitioner and, and one of my other doctors, and I was like, hey, look, uh, is this a smart thing to do? And they were like, look, you're probably you're been asymptomatic this long. You're probably not going to be symptomatic right. at all. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. That's all I needed to hear. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna do this. That's crazy. And um. It was, j- where were we? I forget where we were before I was. No, there. just the, the the aspect of the trip, you know. So yeah. like what it, what it went into. But when you were on the mountain, like you guys camped up there. Oh, we camped. It was a seven day ordeal. Yeah. But I had to cut my trip into six days to catch up with my friends. Right. I was supposed to catch up with them the first day, but then the porter apparently left my tent because this was a different schedule than what which was originally planned for me. They left my tent all the way at the bottom of the mountain on the first day. So I didn't have time to go and catch up to my friends because the sun was already falling and they said, oh, we couldn't do it. So in the next possible time that it was easy for me to catch up to my friends was on day five. Turns out when we, meet, when we meet just before the summit, I'm like, hey, guys, what's up? I'm super excited. We're going to summit together. They already summited. They came down because they were miserable because a bunch of their stuff had got wet. So one of my buddies is sleeping in a wet sleeping bag. One of my other oh, buddies, his shit. clothes are wet. And at that altitude, nothing nothing dries up. Yeah, of course not. Everything is, is frozen, is frozen wet. and wet and, and just miserable. God so then I had to damn. summit by myself on top of that. Holy crap. Yeah, and that was scarier because... And how long do you spend up there at the summit? Oh, maybe five minutes. Okay. Yeah, you can't stay up there too long, especially yeah. the day that I summited because it was snowing sideways. And I'm sure there's a t- is there a time of the year where you just that's like it's pretty much it was supposed to be that time, really? Yeah, and it was snowing sideways, and oh, remember, remember, no matter where you are in the world at that height, it's gonna be uh, yeah, of course, snowing for the most part. Yeah. Um. Again, I'm not really ed- super educated in the matter, but from but yeah, I gathered mean, that's pretty, it's, it's that's pretty much wherever. snowed capped all all year long. But the scary part was I had hiked eight and a half hours to catch up with them to what I thought was gonna be the night of the summit with them. I was wrong, so I had to summit by myself. Like I said, I had about four hours of sleep before I had to wake up at midnight to then summit for seven and a half hours as the sun was rising from midnight until the sun rose. And remember, the guy kept telling me he was just like, "You gotta stay awake. You gotta stay awake because if you fall asleep at that temperature, at that altitude, you'll you'll die." You know. And he was he was telling me that and very adamant about that. And he was Jesus. like. I was freaking out. I'm not going to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, at one point, I was like, all right, I'm going to die or I'm going to do this. And then I was like, no, you can't die. <laughs> Dying's not that. an option. Yeah, I was like, I told the guy, I was like, this isn't safe, man. I got to turn around. And it sucked because I was by myself, so I didn't have my buddies to hype me up. And we yeah. didn't have each other. To, I mean, they had each other to hype themselves right, up. But, but me, all I had was my one guide being like, you can do this. You can, mind it's broken English too. Yeah. You can do this. And sure enough, we did make it. And let me tell you, when I made it, that was like the most incredible feeling in the world and I shed it, I did shed a tear and that was like were you able to just like see a view or I could see a good view before the sun came up because all the lights down at the two cities Moshe and Arusha you could see them uh, lit okay. up but as soon as the sun come up it actually for whatever reason gets colder when the sun gets up, gets up there at the summit and then it starts snowing so Interesting. it was I mean th- just for so you could for reference what I was saying about, you know, dying up there, he had told me that, like, two years ago, he had an, uh, a guy in his 60s who had s- accomplished it. Uh, late 50s, actually, he told me. He had accomplished the summit, and the guy just sat down, put his heads on his pole, and never woke up again. Never what? woke up again. They, up there. The guy died And what's the, what's the procedure of that? I mean, they got to... They carry him down. They have to... They get, like, he told me they get six Ooh. or seven guys and carry him down to the next wow. camp where they can... Uh, helivac the uh, the body off the mountain. So Dude, that's wild. It was it was a, a great experience. Uh, it's definitely a bucket list thing. That's I, for damn sure. A lot of people that I've talked to have been like, I want to do it. Yeah, now. yeah, and, no, that's something and, I, that uh, I would love to do too. Yeah, I mean, for me, like I said, it was the the whole. Okay, like I did this, I can do anything now. Yeah, I don't know exactly. If you saw the post that I made, or if you if you mm-hmm. got the chance yeah, to yeah. read it, but I did. it's um, it's crazy how many other people, um, you know. I'm not sure how many people you know deal with it or you yourself with anxiety and all yep. that. How many people reached out to me and, and how many people said, hey, can you send me this personally, that post that I made? Because I know someone who, who needs this. Right. 
And, you know, my whole idea behind that post was if I can just help out one person, like, I've succeeded because I remember how, like, alone I felt dealing exactly. with all that until I realized how many other people deal with the same stuff and then it helped um, like, tremendously to get over it and, and all that. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a battle that a lot of us are facing. Some may not even know that they're facing it, yeah. right? Um, I mean, anxiety is something that, that has affected people in my, my life, you know? Um, I've seen the effect that it has. Um, luckily, I don't deal with it on like a grand scheme, but I've definitely experienced it. I understand what it feels like, um, what that, what anxious thoughts are like, right? And and kind of being in that headspace and how it can really kind of take you in a in a completely different path, yeah. right? You know, it can take you in a different direction that you don't even one you don't want to be there, nor did you even envision yourself being yeah. there, right? So it just um, gets thrown thrown onto you exactly, and and and. It's crazy because there's not really like a way to put it into words, right? You know, you you try your best to put it into words, but it's more it's a feel thing more more than anything. Yeah. And but you do see, you know, when someone is dealing with it from like the outside in, you could see how it kind of affects yeah. their thought process, just the way they talk, you know, versus a non anxious person, yeah. right? Just the way kind of like the way they perceive things. Yeah. Um. So to me, it is very it is very mental, right? Yeah. So, um. Like you said, you it's something that you've dealt with, right? It's something yeah. that I'm sure you're still dealing with because I don't think it ever goes away. I don't think it, it's ever really gone away. And it never will. I, and that was what bothered me at the beginning. Yeah. I was freaking out with my psychologist, and I was just like, dude, I, like, I'm never going to be fun again. Like, yeah. My life is, is, is over as I know it. He was like, man, that's not true. You know, like, yeah. listen, you got to you gotta you have to work at this too you know it's not just gonna go away out of nowhere exactly i started doing you know yoga eating healthier uh, i obviously like i stopped doing drugs unfortunately drugs got me into that whole mess and right. then i made the lifestyle change for my nephews number one mm -hmm. i mean they were my, like my biggest why is like i need to be alive and competent for them of so course. um but at the same time my psychologist is like look dude you gotta you know, your quality of life is going to get better, too. You should be allowed to have some fun, go out and have a drink or exactly. two. And then finally I started to... It's a healthy balance. Yeah, which it was not before. <laughs> well, because cause think about it. You were on the, the extreme spectrum of the anxiety, yeah. right? So to get yourself out of it, you got to pull to the other uh, side, yeah, right? So 100%. it's like, because what are you, you going to do? You're going to put yourself back into tendencies that got yeah. you there in the first place? It, it, so it, it makes sense, but it's like it's like that, that calibration, yeah. right? So it's you got to like, wean yourself kind of... Yeah, it's like going on a crash diet. You can't just eat fast food all over again. Exactly. You, want. you know, you got to kind of get back into it occasionally. And, and and now I'm having fun again. I'm traveling again and all that. Work is, I mean, dude, I couldn't even, I couldn't even show two-story houses because just climbing the stairs would freak me out because my heart rate, I would start to feel my heart rate. And, yeah. you know. And, and was you... Was or is your anxiety driven from like like more of like a is it like a height anxiety that you have or like is it more like a like a social no, anxiety? I don't, I don't even know. If, I don't think it's social. I think it just has to do like a bunch of like I guess finances. You know, unfortunately, like and this is why I think social media finances, my brother's death, yeah, um, all that kind of stuff. That's why I think social media is honestly horrendous because i found myself and a lot of other people so many times just trying to like keep up with the joneses and this is what we were talking about earlier you know you see somebody that yeah. they're out they're popping bottles they're doing this they're doing that you're like oh i gotta do that you're like you did it last weekend take a yeah, break exactly. do it in a month do it two months from now and yeah there's always someone else to hang out with on social media and i think that has a lot to do with it and honestly if i wasn't in real estate i would probably just delete everything Bro. and and if be i done with it and, and if I wasn't uh, like like doing this, you know, or yeah. trying to you know trying to uh, to create something, I would one thousand percent not be on social media because for the same exact reasons. It's like, I mean, you do it now, even like as I'm sure, like as a realtor, as like right. There's always okay. I want to be that realtor, right? Like yeah. he's doing this, he's doing that. Like I want to be like that, right? Like me, I I watch podcasts or I see this entrepreneur. I'm not gonna be happy until I get that way, right? So it's like we're always stuck in that yeah. comparative. And it's like, it's, it's, it's so easy, right? It's like, it's right here. I look yeah. at it. I go from one picture to the other picture and it, you're always just stuck in that, yeah. in that, that, that hole. Right. And yeah. it, it consumes you. Right. So I, I, I see a com. it's crazy. It's like a common theme, social media, social media, social media, social media. And it's being put out to be like this valuable tool. It is, Which it, is. it is, but, but I, a lot of but people I, don't use it for that. No, it's not, it, they definitely don't, but it's like at what cost too, yeah. right? At what cost to our mental health is it really a valuable tool now? Because 
we're, we're positioning it that way, right? And society is positioning that way, and it is being used that way, and it's opened the door to so many different businesses and allowed so many opportunities to yeah. exist, and it, and it continues to provide that. But again, at what cost, right? Because then, you know, 90% of what I do probably could take 20 seconds. It doesn't take that long to post yeah. something, maybe to engage with a couple comments that, that I might get. But the majority of the time is not me doing that. Yeah. What is it? Consuming the other crap that's out there, right? Yeah. Getting stuck in this explore page, getting <laughs> sucked in. Like I picked on this picture. Now I'm seven profiles yeah. deep. And then I'm like backing out and like ha just to get back to where I was. And I'm like, why was I even on here? Yeah. You know? So it's like, it is a hole, right? And, and, and I think we get stuck in that trap. And I mean, essentially, you could choose to like not be a part of it. I think that is definitely yeah, a choice. I think it's the easiest way, unfortunately. Um, and I think there is definitely a benefit to it. But like, you know, people like us that we may not have that option. It's just about building that awareness of like, okay, I really cannot consume this content. Like I need to either unfollow or be better aware of myself and catch myself in that situation to get out of it when I'm in those holes, right? Yeah. Not just ain't shamelessly just scrolling <laughs> through on at nine in the morning when I'm in bed, right? Yeah. So we could definitely be better. Yeah, the first thing you do when you wake up, I'm so guilty of that. Is like, yeah, phone, and, like. and, and if you read a lot of these things around anxiety, right, um, I do read a lot about it, right? Yeah. Um, I read a lot about mental health. A lot of the books that I, that I read are around that, and I, and I think it because why do I do that? Because it naturally is something that is important to me because I see the benefit that it does when I practice yeah. things to, to avoid that, right? Like meditation, yoga. Yeah. And, and some of those other things. But one of the common themes is like how you start your day already sets the tone about how you're going to be feeling, right? Yeah. If you start your day by scrolling through Instagram for 20 minutes, what happens? It's it's a very hyper-aware uh, situation that's happening because you're going from one picture to the next to the next. So already your brain is firing like that, right? It's already it's already hyper. And what's anxiety? You're, it's a no, very anxious mind. It's a very right? hyper mind. It's going from one thought to the next thought, right? So you're already positioning your brain to already function that way, yeah. right? On top of whatever it is that you're consuming, whether it's good content or not good content, your brain's already firing yeah. that way, right? So one of the common themes they say is like, don't touch the phone. Don't. It's so hard. Though. Yeah, it is. It is. It's easier said than done, right? I but, try to not touch my phone until like 10 in the morning. So what, the, what they just... say is like, don't even put it within reach, right? So yeah, like, yeah, like a lot of us, like we have the phone right next to our bed, yeah. right? So you just unplug and it's like, Right, it's like super easy. Yeah. Where it's like some people say, like, go put it in the room next door, because guess what? It's gonna force you to get up, and then you're already up, so you may go, you know, what? let me go get a glass of water. Oh, let me go to the bathroom. So now you're already doing like more mindful yeah. movements rather than just. You know what the best mindful thing anyone can do in the morning is brush your teeth. Yeah. And do your bed. Oh yeah. Have you ever gone back to bed after brushing your teeth? No. No. <laughs> no wait, it's the day started. It's the true. The day started. You wake yeah. up, you brush your teeth, and no one goes back to bed after yeah. brushing their teeth. It's true. So. And that, 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 that's part of the practice. <laughs> it's funny because a lot of people actually recommend doing that. Yeah, like when you, you wake up, go brush your teeth. Or go go do a task like make your bed immediately yeah. right out of getting out of out of getting well, getting out of the bed. The bed one is good because that I forget his name unfortunately and he's very famous the former U.S. Navy admiral. Okay, this yeah. Guy, he spoke to a college. Uh, uh, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. And let me tell you, it works. Yeah. Because you like do one task and then it's like, all right, I can do something else now. But you it's know? crazy because you you tell that to somebody and they be like, dude, it's, it's not it's it's not that big of a deal. It's just my bed. Yeah. Think about if you can't like do that. that, so did I. But then you, you realize that it does have significance because why? If you can't do the simple task of making your bed, what makes you think you're going to have the simple task of doing anything else? Yeah. Right? So it's like, just make your bed. Why? Because you've accomplished something already. It's not about how you think about it. It's our br We're machines, yeah. right? So your brain fires a, a signal saying, I have to make my bed, right? So then what do you do? You make your bed. In your head now, you've significantly accomplish something yeah. maybe not in your eyes but in the eyes of your brain you accomplish something that i told you to do yeah but if you tell yourself eh, should i make my bed should i not make my bed that's it you've already lost that you already lost the battle yeah. right so it's like those little things make the biggest freaking difference i think they make a they, for me they've made a huge difference i mean getting over my anxiety included starting to make sure the first thing i did was make my bed yeah Go for my runs or walks at six in the morning, yeah. and be in the gym by you know seven thirty. Yeah, and then Just starting your day off yeah, on, a, on a more positive note. It'll help. That helps me 
um, propel myself into doing things that I otherwise think like I couldn't do this before. Like I don't want to. I used to be like, uh, you know, like kind of just big on self sabotaging. I wouldn't even know I was doing it. Exactly. And, it uh, takes a level of awareness to even get yourself out of it. Yeah, and it was. It's a thing I tell everybody now is you got to do those little things because a lot of people are scared to just even. Those little things will help you do the things that you're scared to start doing in your life. Like, I don't know, starting a podcast. Yeah. A lot of people might think, I can't start a podcast. It's going to suck at the beginning. Yeah. And it might suck at the beginning. Definitely, but nobody's yeah. going to get it perfect at the, at, at the start. And I think people are just kind of scared to just start. And I think it starts with literally the most simple tasks like that. And if people just started and just did it and let people talk all the shit they want yeah. in the world... I mean, the people who get stuff done, it's the people who don't care. I mean, it's a cliche. It's, but, but it's, it's the, the people who don't care. You, it, it, you see, like, it, it may be cliche, but you know why it's cliche? Because it's true. Yeah. You know, it, it's relevant. Like, the making the bed thing, there's a reason why the most successful people, they push that and yeah. they advocate for that because they're the same way. Yeah. They say the same thing. Don't give a shit about what the other people think. Why? Because if you do, then you're going to be stuck living their life and not your life, mm -hmm. right? So, there, when you, like... I was listening to a podcast the other day, right? And it's like, the successful people aren't doing anything different. They find a common theme about what other successful people are doing, and they just try to replicate yeah. that, right? In their own craft, you know, whether it's real estate, whether it's being, uh, you know, you're starting a marketing agency, or you're starting a podcast, whatever it may be, you know, there's a common theme amongst everyone where they choose what they want to do they don't worry about anybody else and they build habits that are sustainable like going to the gym yeah. reading a book listening to a podcast things that what benefit you right there's certain things that don't do that like you were talking about like the self-sabotage yeah i mean you definitely have to like check yourself when you're when you start to kind of spiral a little bit here yeah and there. it's there's easy it's easy to you yeah. get start because one thing is like starting the other part is like being consistent about it. Consistency is the biggest key because there's, yeah. and I've told a lot of friends too who are, some days are like, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, okay, perfect. This is when you really have to do it then. You, you have to force yourself to do, st I mean, in my opinion, some people might have a different opinion. Days I don't feel like going to the gym, those are the days where I've really proved to myself like, all right, you have to force yourself to go and get it done. Yeah. Because then you'll feel... Those even, are the days you grow the most, too. You'll have even more endorphins running through your head after yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And I wish people... I, I wish peop, more people could, I don't know, get out of that hole. And that's what I try to do with the posts that yeah. I've made and, and all of that. And, and it works. Like, I had... If, if we could all just kind of focus more on how important us being nice to each other, like, uh, talking about our mental health is, everybody would do so much better. Everybody would do so much better in their lives. And it would... Uh, it's true. It is crazy, dude, because, like, people are generally not nice to people each other. People are mean. People, people are, are super mean. mean. I have so many uh, best girlfriends. At, like, they're, they're, they're you know, a group of, like, seven or eight of my best girlfriends, and it's, like, some of the shit that I hear in between them. I'm just like... like she did that to you? Yeah. I'm just like, you guys aren't friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> really? Like, that's your friend? Yeah. And it's just, uh, people are, are incredible, man. And it, it blows my mind. And that's why I think it's really true that, I guess, uh, you know, your parents always t have told us this. I know you, it's, again, another cliche. Yeah. You know, you're lucky to have three or four good friends when you're older. And honestly, the more that I grow up, I guess, it's the more, more I realize that. True. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, it's uh, it's 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 been a hell of a, a ride trying to get over anxiety and, and get to this point. But I mean, it's like it's, we were, like we were saying, it's it's a battle that doesn't necessarily go it doesn't away. Go away. But but what 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 you do is you find the better ways to manage it. Yeah. Right. So oh, what are the things yeah. that that help for it? You know, things that that make you feel better. And just putting yourself in a position yeah. to, to feel better at the end of the day because it's never it's never really going to go away. Yeah. But what happens is you just find a way to take care of yourself yeah. and to kind of look at it in a different lens because a big part of dealing with anxiety is accepting it. Yeah, well, I'm, like, I'm happy you said that, dude, because... One because the, people look at it like, shit, having anxiety, have fucking yeah. issues, like, <laughs> what the hell's wrong with me? There's, there's nothing, nothing wrong there's with nothing you. There's nothing wrong with you, man. And my psychologist told me that, you know, he was just like, dude, there's, there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. And he went on to tell me a story about how one of the guys at his, like, psych ward, he's like, you want to know, you want to hear a real story about someone who's, honestly, it's unfortunate for them, 
this guy who thinks he's Jesus at three in the morning and he's you know screaming at everybody and waking everyone up and he's like you're not you're doing fine yeah you know? I, was like, <laughs> I was like all right fine dude, yeah fine fine you know and, it's true and yeah it's, there's like serious like issues yeah. and then there's just like the everyday I'm a human issue yeah you know where I mean it, it, you know I'm sure you've yeah. read about like why even anxiety is even a thing yeah. right because what our ancestors were yeah. like anxiety der- derives from like cavemen when they were running away yeah. from the saber toothed tiger that was trying really? to eat them. Yeah. Like, yeah, I gotta read, yeah, read up on how anxiety is really? even originated I'm from. I'm surprised I don't know that. Yeah, dude. Oh, so, shit. so anxi- it, from from what the, the studies show, anxiety is is a is a common human trait yeah. that is just our brain's way of taking care of ourselves. Yeah. Right? It comes from fear. Right, it yeah. derives from fear, from fearful thoughts, from you know just yeah, it's hard to certain you, things that so. that our body has just learned to understand because it's flight or flight, right? So yeah. back in the day, what anxiety was? Because think about it, we've evolved the as fight, a society. Fight or flight back exactly. In the day, yeah. That yeah. Makes sense. That so makes sense. we've evolved as human beings, right? Physically and 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 mentally, right? Yeah. Because our brains back in the day, they had brains, but they were never aware of what we you know what we are today right so for them it was like i'm anxious about do i have enough food for my family and am i going to be safe right and then and it hasn't changed and today what's the same thing we're anxious about can i provide for my family is my family safe um and now there's just so many more stimulants out there so now we're even more anxious than ever before because our brain what's hot to me what's happening is the physical world is evolving but we haven't adapted to the physical world yet, right? Yeah. Social media has come out and it's evolved astronomically in 10 years, but our physical component, our mental component has not been able to catch up to that, right? So I'm sure what's going to happen is there's going to be some sort of evolution of the brain and the brain's going to be able to, to react to things quicker than maybe before, right? The way we're taught is going to be completely different, right? Attention spans are shrinking. So things, things are evolving. Things are changing, hopefully for the better of human society, um, but the reality is we've always had a stimulant of anxiety at some capacity. It's just what was that trigger to the anxiety? Now there's so many different things. It's about the comparative, right? There's the physical component, like does my body look good? Um, yeah. is, the, is, is, is my business going to be as good? Is my girlfriend hot? Uh, you know, like there's just so many different things, right, that we, that we put out there that we're always thinking about. And it comes from a level of fear of what other people think. Which wouldn't exist without social media. Wait, uh, probably not. Not to the same <laughs> scheme. I'm so sure I'm sure it existed. It would exist in some in some But think about it. Form, what you saw was only what you saw on your daily basis. Now what you see is endless. Yeah. You can open any app, you can open any video and you're already down comparing yeah. yourself to that person, to that person, to people we don't even know. Yeah. You know, before it was at least people that we directly interacted with. Now it's anybody and anybody's on the table. Has the and home buying process given you any anxiety? <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes. That is definitely... I, I wouldn't say it's an anxiety thing, right? Again, it kind of comes back to, like, the thing about, like, I feel, like, the pressure yeah. of having to buy a home because I'm 26 years old. Yeah. Uh, you know, my friends are buying houses, so... Well, the fact that you're it's, in it's that a conversation, so, it's a, it's you a societal. Yeah, I mean, so. it's a, but it's societal pressure more than anything, yeah. right? Um, obviously, there's a... Pre- there's a there's societal pressure, but then there's also like the pressure that we put on ourselves, which is a healthy pressure. It's what keeps us going, right? Because there's a healthy level to anxiety too, right? Everyone which, needs that kick in the ass. Because too. if we if we didn't have some sort of fear in us, then there would, like you said, there'd be no fucking spark to there put would be push no ourselves forward. forward. Progress at all? We would, we would not move anywhere. There'd be no sense of urgency, no. and we need a sense of urgency. That's how we grow. That's how we yeah. evolve. That's how we get better. So there's definitely a sense of level, but. The home buying process is definitely a, a stressful process already. I think yeah. as as it is, um, and like you were saying Throw in the beginning, else into it. yeah, you add the element of like, hey, it's the most expensive market now. People from all over the from all over the world are moving. Not even all over the U.S., all over the world. All over the world. I mean, it doesn't matter where: South America, Central America, New okay. York, California, Europe. Everyone wants a piece of the pie over here yeah. right now. And listen, it's awesome from an economic standpoint. It's great for for, it's for great business. For local economies for exactly. Sure. And so, what US is based lo- off of this yeah. is what you you can ask for a better situation. It sucks for locals though. It's yeah, like, it sucks it, especially for people who are and like just it's just, they're, their they're first driving house they're too, driving up the, they're driving up the market, right? Yeah. So what happens is I'm here looking to buy a house for the first time 
And then now a house that's probably 250000 is going for $350,000 because they're coming from markets where that's that's nothing yeah. to them. So they're here willing to spend whatever and whatever. But if you want to hear something crazy, someone in my office um, in 2016 represented the buyer for a home in, in Star Island that sold for $18 million. That home, that, that Adrian who represented that buyer, now represented turned seller, obviously. Right. Because you want to turn around and sell it. They sold that house for thirty million dollars six months ago. Thirty million dollars. He what? made a twelve million dollar profit on the house over the course of five years in this market. See, when houses <laughs> when, when houses like that sell it to me, I'm like, where, it's absurd. Where do you even get that money from, bro? You know where the money <laughs> the money a lot of the money comes from obviously like it's finance. old money too. It's old money, it's generational wealth. But we're also seeing a huge influx of people our age who have a ton of money. Also, People who are kind of 35-ish, also kind of part of our generation, yeah. who have been working for tech companies now, who are just starting to yeah, mature. They're, and they're blossoming. Better. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the, the Facebooks of the world. Like, if you, like, we were talking about it um, uh, a couple hours ago. I mean, we were saying how, um, you know, like, if you were f- Facebook employee number 50, you're worth millions of dollars right yeah. now. So, it's like, it's about buying into a culture of a business. Yeah. And, 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 and if you reap the benefits of working for a startup, then it, it works for you. And I'll take it a step further for you. It's more so that tech is so... The tech in the way that we know it right now that is just exponentially expanding every, daily at this point. Those people have been with these companies, a lot of them since day one. Yeah. They have... All those companies are starting to go public. Exactly. And they have an incredible amount of stock options. They're exactly. liquidating. They're super cash heavy. And they're yeah. saying, I don't care. I want the house. And yeah. they're just paying in cash. True. So to some extent, it's it's ill advisement on part of their agents, I guess. But at the same time, it's not because it's like, hey, if you want the house, you're going to have to do yeah, this. Yeah, you don't really have an option. So I, I don't even know at this point. It's just, it's all, it, not, none of it makes any sense <laughs> um, at all. You know, it's 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 crazy how unfortunately Miami people have been uh, completely driven into exile. People going back to having to live with their parents and yeah. and because um, people's rent going I, up by I was 50, gonna, 60 I was percent. Say, I know multiple people that they moved out to you know paying rent. It didn't make sense to pay rent anymore. It and then it didn't make sense, and they've just moved back home. People's rents were becoming triple, even quadruple what their mortgages would have been if they just bought a house. Yeah, so. And, um, you know, a lot of people now are like, oh, I'm going to wait for the crash. I'm going to wait for a crash. Unfortunately, I don't think there is, there's not going to be one. I, I agree. I, so, I mean, everyone said, oh, the market's going to dip. The market's going to dip. I'm like, dude, this is just the beginning of yeah, this. Yeah. Um, the good thing about Miami, though, is that since it's a vacation place, if some if this shit ever does hit the fan, the first thing that a lot of people liquidate is their second home. True. their vacation home. Yeah. So, but I don't think, you know, a financial crisis like what we had in 2008, that's never going to happen again because... Um, a, a quick statistic for you, not to be boring here. Oh, yeah. 57% of the homes that are owned in America are equity rich, meaning the uh, owners own at least, they have at least 50% equity in the house. Got it. Whereas back in 2008, people were getting, had zero equity on million dollar loans. You know, it just, it made no sense. It didn't make any sense, yeah. So now the equity situation is different. People are equity rich. There's, I don't think going to be a financial crisis like there was in 2008. Will there be a correction? Are people trying to time a correction? Sure, but corrections always just kind of go back gradually right. to where they were just exactly. before. And that's luck. That's all luck. You it's know? like the stock market. I mean, you're it's never going to buy at the lowest you and you're never going to sell at the highest. It's the if people, they did, everyone would there's be rich. No, yeah, there's no timing anything. Yeah. It's it's luck if you're trying to time it. Yeah, and that's exactly. what I'm telling you. It's time in the market, you know, uh, not... You can make uh, calculated decisions, but you're never going to, like you said, you're never going to hit. Yeah, it's all about time in the market. And I mean, the, I think too now, like, at least you know me being one of those people trying to start the process of the of the home buying like it's not like the most unreasonable time either right i mean obviously the market itself is unre- yeah. a little bit unreasonable in terms of pricing and just kind of the competition out there yeah. but like now you know loans that you can get you can qualify for a loan and just put 3 3.5% down yeah. on certain loans right so the 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 liquid that you may have needed before you made you don't necessarily yeah. need as much before where like before it was 20% You'd right. be you'd be shocked how many people um, talk to me about like buying a house and they're like, oh, I can't afford it. I'm yeah. like, you can very well afford, afford it. A yeah. house. Well, listen, if it was the twenty percent <laughs> rule, I wouldn't even be having this conversation yeah. right now. But the, the, that's what I'm saying. It's given me at least the opportunity yeah. to do it. And it, you know, obviously, there's downfalls to not putting the twenty percent, and there's certain things that that you reap the benefit of, like the PMI and yeah, stuff well, like that. You, but you could always refinance and you stuff could like refinance that. Refinance, or you add. 
an extra hundred, two hundred dollars every month if you can. Right. You know, and and that'll really lower your payment True. down a lot. Yeah. If uh, you won't even know it, it lower from years. It'll lower by years that yeah. you pay it, and but uh, you'll pay it off. I'm sorry. Yeah. Many quicker. years earlier. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people realize that, and um, I I don't know. It's just it, again, people just think home ownership is so unaffordable, and it's not. Yeah. It's really actually very attainable, and that's the best thing I think anyone can attain. Renting can be better in some situations, obviously, but, I mean, nothing beats owning a piece of land. Of so, course, yeah. You know? I mean, to me, I mean, this is my perspective. Renting, essentially, is an opportunity for someone, you know, who doesn't necessarily have the capital and yeah. and may have other ventures that they may be uh, looking into or, yeah. more of a, like, a temporary location. So, it definitely, like, I don't know if it has its benefits, but it has a, a reason. You can be on the move. Right? Exactly. You, you know, have a landlord fixing stuff for you if you use that capital to grow money somewhere yeah. else. You know. Well, it, exactly. I mean, I, there was. I mean, this was years ago. I heard Gary V say this, but he yeah. was like, like obviously owning property is awesome, but like you know, you could put your money in other places too. Like yeah. think about it. If I had fifty thousand dollars, right, and I wanted to put it on a down payment, gradually it would obviously increase yeah. because of the property value, and I'm paying off a mortgage every every month. But like, if I had fifty thousand dollars and I wanted to put it in a stock, obviously there's a benefit to that yeah. too, right? If I wanted to put it into the S and P five hundred and I want to see it grow twenty five percent, I'm sure that's a pretty damn good it's win a, too, it's right? A, it's a never ending conversation because you can do this, you can do that, right. and every. Everybody always says something different, you know, and in the end, it's whatever you're most comfortable with. At the end of the day, stocks only go up, right? Yeah, (laughs) and apparently houses too, man. I mean, over the course of time, look, dude, a piece of land is always going to appreciate for the most part. It is. I mean, history, I I mean, if you look at historic trends, obviously it has its ups and downs. Now, the problem is, is like you buy a house and you want to turn around and sell it. And I mean, back in the, you know, two or three years ago, four years ago, you couldn't just buy something and turn around and sell it like you could now. Right. And that's what I've told people. As a matter of fact, I sold a house to uh, a good client turned friend of mine uh, back in, we closed in February 2020 for $2.35 million. And I told him, I'm like, hey, dude, look, if you buy the house and try and flip it, you're going to lose money. Yeah. But if you actually live in it for four or five years, I'll sell it for you in four or five years and you'll make money. Yeah. And then the pandemic happened. Never in my life would I have thought this guy would have got his money back yeah. and then some, or even, uh, he broke even actually, plus a little on the top. In a matter of uh, nine months, he ended up selling for 2.9 million. Wow. And the pandemic, and it was like. Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my, my boss just sold it and bought a house a couple months ago, and his the value on his house is already up like 60, 70K. It's absurd. I sold a condo for 745,000 back in December, we closed. The same condo is now worth eight hundred and fifteen thousand. That's ridiculous. Over the course of um, a little over a month and a half. It do you think? No I mean, I know, like we were talking about. Do you think it'll like like is that is that valuation on that house that high because just because of the the demand another right see, now? Another another sorry another sale that just happens. Like every sale since that sale has progressively gone higher and higher, and um, it's it's crazy. I mean, you could literally list. A home for almost whatever the hell you want and just and see get if you it. get a bid i mean i had friends who just listed a house they flipped they got a hundred thousand dollars over what it really should have been worth which represents a 14 percent uh 14 more than what it should have gone for yeah. and it's just i mean I'm, I'm i'm shocked i'm blown away how people are just kind of pulling up to the door and saying <laughs> Here you go. I don't care. I want it, yeah. and I'll take it. So maybe if I was that wealthy and cash rich, I would, do, I would it do the same yeah, thing, whatever, you know? You don't, you don't you have don't to worry know. about anything. Just go in there and get yeah. whatever you want. Yeah, dude. So, hey, Is there, like, a market here in Miami right now that you think is, like, up and coming, that there's well, opportunity I mean, for, like, in, you know, for long-term a, investment? Because, yeah. like, obviously, like, there's Brickle, there's Miami Beach, there's um, well, everything in Wynwood, there, Midtown. Yeah. Every, yeah. Obviously, there's the, those areas, but is there like a is there a dark horse in, in Miami right there's now? There's a lot of dark horses if you're willing to kind of deal with the neighborhoods changing right. as, as uh, more developers come in and, and flippers come in and fix the houses. I mean, Alapata, I mean, hell, even just outside of like Liberty City, the Wynwood yeah. area, um, right outside of the design district. There's already homes in the design district, which used to be like, I mean, people wouldn't even like to you know walk around there during the day. Yeah. There's homes going for over a million dollars now in the design district. A million and a half, actually. So 
Yeah, I, I've seen houses pop up in that like Liberty Square yeah. area there that they're nice houses. Four hundred thousand dollars. Four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and a couple years ago it would have been one hundred and ninety thousand exactly. dollars, something like that. Yeah. You know, um, so those areas are, are great for Airbnb too. You know, yeah, you buy true. low, you fix it up, your Airbnb. Airbnbers don't really know, and I'm not saying the neighborhoods are like bad. Right. It's unfortunate the stereotypes. Yeah, I mean, very, when I'm looking but, at Airbnb, I definitely look at the reviews to see if yeah. for some reason those people did. But I, I mean, I've definitely stayed in like oh, areas I've where I'm like, I've stayed. Nah, in I don't know if this was a great area. Yeah, or not. I've definitely <laughs> stayed in some Airbnbs where I'm just like, oh yeah, if I lived here, I probably would have not lived here. I probably wouldn't have stayed. Right. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you could do that with Airbnb. So, but the big money isn't Airbnb anymore. The big money is going to be in monthly rentals. I think um, thirty day rentals for digital nomads who are paying top dollar. Yeah. Like that concept is growing. There's like a lot of hotels that are oh doing yeah, that. The new eleven building. Yeah. Twelve uh well, they build they're building two residences. The second phase of their building. Um you can rent it out twelve times a year. The idea is to do it once a month and you get, you know, ten thousand dollars a month for yeah. it. And you could you could search you could yeah, you could search for thousand dollars that. a month. So That's wild. No, the Miami market's developing and it's developing fast. And I'm happy that we're a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. I'm happy that I'm a part of yeah. it. And it's cool to see everything, you know, I mean, just grow before our eyes, all the new buildings that are coming up. And um, I'm, I'm excited, dude. Yeah, so It's good stuff. Yeah. Cool. So before we wrap it yeah. up, we got some rapid fire uh, quick questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, first question. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know the answer to this. Okay. Uh, be, uh, beach or mountains? Um, at the end of the day, beach. Okay. But the mountains has a special place. The mountains has a special place because it's cool. I smoke, you know, go out and smoke a cigar in a cabin, country music. That, but that. I don't actually like the sand. I hate, I hate the sand. But a I lot of people like, don't like the sand. I like being around the beach. I don't like being on the sand, though. Yeah, a lot of people don't so like the sand. So let's just go with beach. We'll go okay. with beach. Okay, so. that's fair. I figured that's what it was going to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, next question, do you have a favorite movie? My favorite movie, I think... Uh, you know, if my mom was the one answering this question, she would probably say Jurassic Park. I watched that movie so much as a little kid, I actually broke Dude, the VCH same. tape. Me and my, me and my, me and my uh, friends growing up, uh, no joke, would run around the back backyard. I was T-Rex, they yeah. were Velociraptors, and we were running around like this yeah. in the backyard. Our parents probably looked at us like, what? We raised these things? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, Con- the Conjuring 2 is probably Ooh. my favorite horror movie of all time. Wow. It's very, very... I love um, watching kind of uh, spiritual horror movies like that because those are things I mean depending on what you believe in or not yeah. I believe in shit like that yeah. so I try not to believe like in shit like that <laughs> that, that stuff I watch it I'm like that, that's not real yeah, that's not real it's like, to me it's like okay that messes with your mind you have to really think it makes you think it's yeah. like that can actually happen uh, yeah, a serial I mean, killer with a mass of 6'5 isn't always really yeah. gonna happen it, to me to me those know? movies like The Conjuring are more like symbolic I would say yeah. you know the way I look at it is like we could feel that way internally, like we're like possessed by yeah. something, right? Where like we feel like we don't have control yeah. over our mind, and you know, which that yeah, I could yeah. I could definitely see. The first one was great. Yeah, and uh, series, it is a really well made movie. The series went from uh, based on a true story to how much shit can we make? Yeah, 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 yeah. whatever. Yeah, Anything to sell the so, sell tickets. And the first Fast and the Furious. So. Oh, uh, that is a good one. <laughs> even though they're like on what Fast and Furious, like twenty. No, I don't even know if I watched the last <laughs> one. So. Um, uh, next question: a favorite Cuban dish, Cuban food. Um, a breaded chicken stick, bitten pani sal de uh, pollo, okay. which doesn't make sense in my head because that's how they have it in the menu: bitten pani sal de pollo, which is a chicken fried steak, right. chicken steak. Is that, isn't that pretty much like the same thing as like a milanesa? Yeah, but a milanesa is more, I think, Argentinian, where uh, it has tomato sauce on it and cheese. Oh, okay, so the milanesa has the, 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 the yeah. red sauce. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's basically like a chicken parm. Yeah. And before it's people, crazy. Um, whenever they see this, if that gets edited into this video, give me shit. That's how my grandmother always used to say it. Beat them, Hey, no, no, no. So. Hey, listen. <laughs> we'll find out later, but I, I'm, I'm with it. Um, and then last question, a book or a podcast that, that you uh, have read or uh, listened to that you recommend? So, I mean, no one's going to like the type of podcast and... and it can be I anything. To, I feel like so. Dale, my favorite race car. I mean, Dale Junior. Who okay. you know his name? Yeah. He's got a podcast called the Dale Junior Download, and he brings in a lot of um, you know NFL guys who are kind of trying to switch up the diversity in NASCAR right now. I mean, okay. Floyd Mayweather on top of that, who now has a NASCAR team. They're trying nice. to really 
diversify yeah. NASCAR. And he yeah, that was the guy Bubba, the Bubba guy that Wallace. Talking about. Bubba yeah. Wallace, yeah. Uh, and he was the first uh, black NASCAR driver to win in, I mean, since I think the '60s. So that was really cool that yeah. that he's racing under a team that's owned by Michael Ford and operated by Michael Jordan. That is awesome. So um, the Dale Jr. download is one of my favorites. Um, Jess, she has a lot of shit to talk about on her podcast, Whiskey and Water. I occasionally listen to that one. Um, so I hope she sees that. <laughs> um, you know, Jocko Wilnick, the few, former U.S. Navy SEAL. You ever seen that guy? I, I've I seen love, him, yeah. I love his podcast. Yeah, a lot of people uh, refer to him on, like, videos yeah. and books that I've read. A lot of people refer to him. Jocko's a badass. Yeah. So I love I love hearing what he has to say and all that. So, I mean, cool. he's a big motivation. So, yeah. Yeah, dope. All right, cool. So uh, before we wrap it up, where can the people find you? And, yeah, if they so want to connect with you. You guys can find me, connect with me at allinmiami.com or at will underscore lengel3. That's will underscore L-E-N-G-Y-E-L-3 on Instagram. And you can catch me on YouTube at Will and Joe. So Dope. Yeah. Did you guys get any content around the Kilimanjaro hike or not really? Oh, my God. So uh, I'll make this as quick as possible. <laughs> my buddy was in Arusha a few days earlier, and all of his camera equipment got stolen. Oh. He had his drone... About seven thousand dollars worth of equipment was stolen straight out of his hotel room. Are you shitting? Yeah, me? it's unfortunate. So that we, were, sucks. we were gonna get really cool. Videos I'm sorry, even I'm sorry, I even asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> so we were excited to get cool footage, but Damn, we unfortunately bro. we just got pictures and all that. So that's something. And it's you got, okay. You got the mental. I'll memory. have to go back, I guess. Yeah, yeah maybe <laughs> just climb Everest now or something like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> dope. All hey, right, guys. Thank you, bro. Of course, brother. I appreciate Love it. You, so. Thanks for being on, yeah. uh, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can find us at Stay Tranquilo at staytranquilo.com and the beer, Johnny Cuba. You can find that at johnnycuba.us um, on Sedano's Presidente Supermarket, uh, soon to be Win Dixie. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. So thanks I got for being excited. on, brother. So thank you.